What's up, everybody? Happy holidays. I'm Scott Casper, joined as always by Tony Hager. Thanks for joining us right here on Global Wrestling News. Well, College Wrestling's top holiday tournament gets underway this weekend. It's the 54th edition of the Ken Craft Midlands Championship. We head to Northwestern University. The 2016 field will include more than 70 ranked wrestlers from across the nation, including 38 inside the top 10. Let's start at 125, Tony. Thomas Gilman, obviously the favorite. Who else are you going to be looking out for? Well, Thomas Gilman is is a huge favorite here. I don't see anybody else coming close. You know, Lambert from Nebraska is going to be there. Right. There'll be a few other guys that can contend and maybe make the semifinals a little bit more uh, enjoyable to watch. But all eyes are going to be on Thomas Gilman. This is going to be a, a huge point get getter for the Hawkeyes. They're looking to you know bring home that Midland State you know that that title that they're always you know they bring home every single year. They got to have Thomas Gilman here without Corey Clark at 133. And you're right. We moved to 33 in the news out of Iowa City is that Corey Clark will not be traveling with the Hawkeyes. Yeah, this is a uh, you know a couple months back we heard that he's going to be injured. This is a uh, Pretty severe injury. I don't think we're going to see him until late February, maybe even the Big Ten Championships till then. So, But this bracket, though, is, is still loaded without without Clark there. This was going to be a preview of the NCAA tournament. Gross is there. Richards is there. Montoya, Earl Hall's oh, back wow. for another year. So the quarterfinals at 133 pounds is going to be you know, explosive, even without Corey Clark. Explosive, to say the least. Let's move to 41. Matthew Kolodzik will be joined by New Jersey rival Anthony Ashnell. Also, NC State's Kevin Jack. Yeah. I'm, I've been talking about Matthew Kolodzik almost every single week on this show. Like it's he's LeBron James on ESPN. I wasn't going to say anything. Yeah, this is this this kid is is just bursted on the scene uh, for Princeton. He's got one of the toughest schedules. You know, he had a big win over Ashnall in that duel, and I see both of those guys getting back to the finals. Kolodzik picking up a big win at Midlands. So you're picking Kolodzik to of win course. it out. All right, let's go to 149. Brandon Sorensen, likely the top seed, but this is really a loaded field. I like Ken Theobald of Rutgers to make some noise. I think he'll make some noise. He, he's had a, an okay start to the year. He's beaten some top top 10 or top 20 guys, I would right. say. He hasn't been creeped into that top 20, get that big signature win. So, uh, you know, if he can come away from here, maybe push Sorensen, he might get some more love from the rankers. But right now, he's on the outside of top 10. Michael Kemmerer will make his Midlands debut as the favorite at 157, but he's going to have a tough road to reach the finals. Yeah, at the beginning of the, the season, I would have said absolutely his road will be tough with Richie Lewis there, Max Roshkoff. Uh, but both of those guys are out for or a season injury, season ending injury. So it's easy for you, you know, to say. yeah. So Kemmer uh, was one match away last year from from placing at the Midlands. He had a he had a blast at this tournament. So I think he'll come back. He's going to pick up his first Midlands state title. Well, let's move to 165. You got two time defending champ Isaiah Martinez and returning national runner up Isaac Jordan. They're on a collision course, Tony. Yeah, both of these two big names in the sport of wrestling, but there's no bigger name than Imar. If picking anybody else besides IMR right now would be just a sake for argument. You know, Anthony Valencia is there, Clark Glass is there, so those could be, I guess you could call them Cinderella picks at the Midlands, but all IMR here in yeah. Jordan. All right, Zahid Valencia headlines the field at 74, but this one is pretty wide open. Yeah, Valencia is the big name here, but there's names like Leland Weatherspoon, South Dakota State's David Koser is really you know wrestling well, Alex Meyer, right. um, he's been putting up the biggest points he has in his career. So, you know, I think we're going to see somebody that we're not used to getting in the finals breakthrough here at the Midlands. 184 pounds, probably going to be the toughest 10 ranked wrestlers at that weight, including the defending Midlands champ, Jack Deckow and Ohio State's national champ, Miles Martin. Yeah, Miles Martin coming in. He's going to come to this Midlands tournament on his own. Ohio State will not be there, but there's also guys like Sammy Brooks, TJ Dudley. That could make some noise here. All eyes will be on Martin. Right. You know, last year everything was all eyes were on David Taylor. I kind of feel like, you know, Miles, Mar Ma Miles Martin will be kind of like the fan favorite. He's got a tough feel to hear at 184 pounds. Really hasn't, you know, coming up that weight class, hasn't really shown people that he's the guy just yet. All right, no real favorite at 197. Nate Roeder will likely be your top seed, but overall it's pretty wide open. Yeah, I, I like Brett Harner in this field from Princeton. You know, he's 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 really climbing up my list. Right. This weight class lacks that uh, star power for the Midlands Championship. And if we know anything from past experiences, Midlands is really the test, you know, the, where you make your name for NCAA right. championships. You, you win a Midlands title, you're going to be probably an All-American. Yeah, nobody really ever talks about the Southern scuffle 
is being why well, I won that, and then I went on to win a national championship. Yeah, Millens is where it's at. This has got yeah. the history, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna maybe bring a star here from this weight class. All right, finally, let's head to 285 pounds, the heavyweights. Three of them ranked inside the top five: Connor Medbury, Tanner Hall, Sam Stahl. I mean, right there, I could stop. But who you got? <laughs> yeah, Medbury, and then the rest of the field here. That that season off, that red shirt, really was huge for Connor. Able to kind of regroup. Get, you know, get his weight, you know, his, his management as far as strength goes under control. You know, Sam Stoll, I think, though, is really the story here of the tournament. All eyes will be on him at this weight class. He has, he suffered a knee injury, right. you know, late last year. So it's going to be interesting to see if Iowa lets him wrestle throughout the whole tournament or really just get a couple matches under his belt. But it's Medbury against the whole field. All right, let's put the brakes on right now. We've got to take a quick time out. When we come back, Logan Stieber talks about his first world championship, plus more news from around the world of wrestling. You're watching GWN, powered by Defense Soap. Wow, 40 years. Time really flies. Don't seem like it's been that long. It seemed like only yesterday that I started out route delivering it to the stores. For over 40 years, we're really proud to keep the same quality ingredients and not change our recipe. Help us celebrate our 40th anniversary by joining into our cookies recipe contest with a chance to win a Traeger Bronson 20 smoker. You can enter it on our Facebook page or cookiesbbq.com. Thanks for 40 years, and we'll see you in another 40 years. All right, four-time NCAA champ Logan Stieber made his mark on the international stage with an electrifying gold medal performance in Hungary. Stieber opened his world title run with a quick 10-0 tech fall and then topped eventual bronze medalist Akhmen Chakhaev of Russia 13-11. After hitting another last-second takedown to reach the finals, it was Stieber who won his first world championship with an 8-4 decision over Georgia's Becca Latabzi. USA Wrestling's Richard Emmel recently sat down with former Hodge winner to talk about his breakout performance in Budapest. Did winning this one, did it feel, I mean, it's a world title, but you've won big tournaments before. Did it feel any different than any other thing you've won before? Or was it a different sort of experience? Yeah, I mean, it was different. Um, I I would say it's the one I, I like the most. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I said this in, in the interview after, afterwards, but everything else is kind of just, you know, kind of came naturally. Um, just between like state titles and you know winning a NCAA title, you know, I just I always I always just believed it would it would come and then it did. Yeah. And you know with the world level stuff, I, I've always believed I, I could win and I was going to win, but it, you know I never did. I never made a team. I never did all this stuff. So for it to happen, it, it was it was cool. I mean, it was really cool. So let's talk about the fun part. Okay, so. You're in Budapest. You've already done your training. You're ready to rock. You tow the line. Um, you get your draw. And I, I saw your draw, and I was like, come on. Is this for real? Like, literally, 
every single guy you wrestled was probably like the top four guys, literally the top four guys you could have wrestled, uh, looking throughout the weight class. Um, I mean, I know it, it shouldn't matter. You shouldn't think about it, you know, but when you see that, like what, what, what's going through your head? You know, I, I was pumped. You know, I, I'll be honest with you. Usually, I like one match where it's uh, maybe a warm up match or maybe a little bit lighter. But I was like, you know, I was pumped every time I went overseas last year. I, I wanted to be able to wrestle with, like the best guy. Mm-hmm. You know, and I was able to for the most part wrestle with Romanov and Chimizo and those guys. So I was like, let's go. Like, let's you know, there's gonna be a short turnaround anyway, so I might as well wrestle. You know, best guys, and so let's let's see it. And, and you know, I talked to Travell, and, and Travell was like, "Listen, you know, they also have the same draw as you. You know, they the guys that you have, like, you know, they have tough draws as well. They gotta, you know, follow you, or or, or they're in a similar situation. So it's not like I'm the only one who mm-hmm. has the tough draw. You know, so I was like, yeah, I mean, that, that makes makes sense. One thing I did want to ask you now that you've done this. Uh... What's the plans, you know, the plan to stay at uh, at 61 kilos? You should have that, you, you do have that automatic buy, you know, to the trials finals if you if you stay at the weight class. I mean, that's, is that sort of the game plan, you know, moving forward, stick to 61? Yeah, that, that's the game plan for this year. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm in the finals, so it, it, it makes sense. It wouldn't really make sense to me, though. I mean, <clears throat> to, to not be in the finals and, and you know, I, I would I would feel confident at 65, but I'll, I'll stay down. I'll stay down at 61, and you know, I won't have to make the weight again until June. So that's nice. And then, uh, yeah, so I uh, I'll stay down, and you know, we'll play it year you know year by year after after this year. But um, for now, uh, I'll stay down at 61, and and uh, go from there. You know, Tony, I feel like there's so much wasted talent out there since we've gone to eight weight classes. Logan Steber is the perfect example of an elite athlete without a weight class. We've got to get back to 10. You know, I think everybody in the United States wants us to get back to 10, but the world doesn't want us to do that. We have such a, we're so deep at all these different weight classes, so, so to give us more opportunities. Anybody else outside the United States isn't going to want that. Well, I mean, look at swimming, diving track. These athletes have 100 events to compete in. I don't feel like we're asking for that much, really. Yeah, I, we're not. We, we definitely need more opportunities, just like you said. But, you know, I think we do need to concentrate on wrestling to staying in the Olympics. And we almost lost this a couple years ago. So let's solidify ourselves as an Olympic sport, you know, through 2040, whatever it has to be. And then let's go after these weight classes. All right, we'll talk more international wrestling after this short timeout. This program is brought to you in part by our friends at Barbarian Apparel. In this town, there's only one pizza joint that has your best interests in mind. They make every single pie from scratch. The freshest ingredients, 100% real mozzarella. Oh, and if your engine's running a quart low, well, they can take care of that too. Casey's, famous for pizza. Right now, get free breadsticks with the purchase of any large made-from-scratch pizza. Yellow Blue wants to show you global energy demands are expanding at an alarming rate. Power grids in the U.S. are aging while coal plants continue to close at record rates. Utility rates are at an all-time high and there's no end in sight. If this concerns you, call Yellow Blue, delivering products and services that are not only green, but cost effective. You can be independent, safe, and secure. We'll show you how at yellowbluetech.com.
Welcome back. The Iranian Wrestling Federation has proposed a series of three nation tournaments to be held annually under the banner of World Solidarity for Wrestling. A letter outlining the proposal has been sent to the United World Wrestling President Nana Lalovic, according to Press TV. The idea is for contests to be held in freestyle, Greco-Roman, and women's disciplines, bringing together the countries that have historically experienced political tensions. Here to talk about it, joining us is one of wrestling's great backers, and that is Homan Tovakolian. I'm excited. I got to tell you, the holidays, the presents keep on coming. And the news that Iran is proposing a three nation solidarity wrestling tournament to UWW to include world powers within the sport hit on the 19th of December. Uh, I'm not exactly sure if if it's an easy to explain, but let's let's tackle it if we can. Can you tell us what their intentions are? Sure. I mean, this was in the works uh, behind the scenes for a few weeks now, and what they are thinking is something similar to the Goodwill Games that was, uh, I believe, occurring in the 90s when I was uh, in college. I remember uh, it was very effective getting all the countries together. So Iran's thinking is, let's get this unity tour going on between the U.S., Russia, and Iran, the major powers in the sport of wrestling. And it will be a uh, friendly competition, uh, and they, were, they are suggesting they do it in three locations, which is pretty cool. So they want to do this in Times Square um, and then also in Red Square and in Iran, Milad Tower, which is another symbolic uh, landmark. So if somehow uh, if we could pull this off, this would be huge. I think this would be excellent for the sport, uh, growing it, um, getting corporate sponsors and the attention of corporate media and uh, corporate money. So it's interesting. I know it's just a, a recommendation and suggestion right now. I'm wondering how UWW will respond. I know USA is in favor of it, and I'm pretty sure Russia would not give up a chance to wrestle USA and Iran. So this all should come together. Uh, hopefully in sometime in January, we should get some feedback from uh, Mr. Lalovich. But as of now, Iran is gun ho on this. And I know by uh, from speaking to Rich Bender that this is an excellent idea. In my opinion, this will benefit the U.S. athletes a lot. Imagine getting to wrestle the uh, Iranians and the Russians before the world championships. So let's say if you lose, hopefully we won't, you have all the time to make up, correct yourself, and win that world title. Well, the idea may be symbolic uh, in terms of contests. And, and by the way, we do want to draw some some closure here we have freestyle greco and women's disciplines all competing but it will be different countries involved in those competitions uh it serves to to do a couple things first of all bring together the peoples of the countries that have historically experienced great political tensions and it's it's a rather unique time for us to be doing that so let's talk about the, the countries that would compete in each discipline sure so what iran has suggested is um in freestyle, Iran, U.S., and Russia, which are superpowers in that uh, style of freestyle. And also, same thing for Greco, which they suggested Russia, Turkey, and Iran. I'm kind of sad not to see U.S. there, but I'm hoping we get our U.S. team in the mix soon. And for the women's freestyle, they're suggesting Russia, uh, Japan, and U.S.A. Mo, it's always good to talk to you. Thank you for shepherding this cause. I think it's an outstanding idea uh, that Iran is proposing the Three Nation Solidarity Wrestling Tournaments uh, to include uh, the world powers of UWW. It's unique, it's uh, outstanding in its effort to unite, and I believe it has the right people behind it. We appreciate the time today. Thank you very much, Scott. And then hopefully this event happens. I mean, sports always brings peace. It always brings people to the table. It, it kind of gets rid of the whole political tension. So I believe this is for better of humanity and sports. And Scott, I really appreciate what you do too as well. I mean, uh, we need programs like you. We need more people like you to promote our sport. I mean, Tony, we talk about this all the time. Nothing brings people together more than sports. Yeah, we, we talked earlier about keeping wrestling in the Olympics. This type of stuff is exactly what that the Olympic Committee will look at is, you know, how are these you know, these, these countries coming together. Right. And this is, a, this is a huge opportunity for them. So the more the opportunities we get for the United States to compete overseas, it's going to be better, I think, for the sport of wrestling. All right, time for a quick timeout. On our way to break, here's some of the top throws of 2016 from our friends at United World Wrestling. Stay tuned.
The war raged for generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew, changed, evolved. The warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received. Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defend so, defend what you have built. There's only one pizza joint that has your best interests in mind. They make every single pie from scratch. The freshest ingredients, 100% real mozzarella. Oh, and if your engine's running a quart low, well, they can take care of that too. Casey's, famous for pizza. Right now, get free breadsticks with the purchase of any large made from scratch pizza. Hebron High School in Indiana is a fairly typical high school that offers wrestling. What you may not find at every school, though, is a wrestler who's bilingual, a straight-A student who's also a class president, a wrestler who acts, who plays the flute, and repairs computers in his downtime for fun. Here to talk about this outstanding student is Hebron coach Todd Adamczyk. I was made aware of what you're doing there in, in Hebron, Indiana, by uh, the good folks, well, in particular, Clayton McBride of McBride Mats. As a matter of fact... He has uh, helped outfit your wrestling practice room with all new wall pads and mats, and uh, it's it's absolutely a gorgeous room. How did that relationship start? Well, it started with us just knowing that we needed to get a, a outfitted again, get our room done. We searched around, and you know, it's not so much that that he had the the best quality, but he did have the best quality. He it's not so often that you see a, I want to make sure I get my words right here, um, a CEO of a company who is that involved. He, he called us, he talked to us just about every day. Um, just, he built a relationship with us. So a lot of times you, you order something, it's online, you're dealing with the computer, but, uh, he called us, dealt with us right over the phone and, and built a personal relationship. Okay. So this, this is what uh, maybe it surprises some folks. Um, there was not a program for wrestling at Hebron High School, was there? No, sir. Was there a feeder program? We had nothing at all. We started from the ground up. How does a guy go about starting a program uh, 10 years ago where there was none at a high school level and then starting a feeder system that uh, in the middle school that helps to develop that high school program? Well, I walked into the athletic director's office and said, uh, I think we can make this happen. Um, there were some old mats that were lying around. I said, this isn't the best of stuff, but we can make it work and let's grow from there. Um, our athletic director encouraged us to write up a proposal, go to the board. Uh, our very first year, we operated as a club and not as a team. The following year, we, uh, we had a, a junior varsity schedule and took off from there. One of the things you and I talked about off air was a young man named Anthony Somerville. Um, and Anthony's not a typical wrestler, is he, Coach? Oh, not at all. Gosh, he's, um, he's first chair flute in the band. Um, he, he had the lead role in the school play. He's, the, he's uh, president of his class. You, you wouldn't think he's a wrestler, but he's, he has the second-best record on our team right now. Second. And he's 
the all right, yeah, so he's second the, best record on the team. He's he ranks third in his overall graduating class at four point one eight GPA. I think that's pretty special. It, it is special. A kid like that doesn't come along very often, and he's done that work himself. So there's we're, we can't take any of the credit for that. He's put in that work. He's he deserves that pat on the back. There's nothing we've done except for led that horse to water. He did all the drinking. Coach, I know his mom, Melissa, is on staff there as a Spanish teacher. Uh, what did she and, and Roy have uh, to offer as far as encouraging him into the sport? Well, that's exactly it, the encouragement right there. Um, I know his dad wanted him to get involved in sports, and, and he was a big part of that. His dad's a big guy. Holy cow. I mean, you'd hate to meet him in a dark alley. Just a big, strong, physical guy. And right there, I thought, okay, if Tony's half of that, we're, we're going to have something to work with here. Who in your ath uh, athletic administration or administration overall at Hebron would you like to recognize? Um, well, Rhonda Walker was the athletic director when we first got started, and she was a big part of helping us get through all the paperwork, the things we had to do with uh, the school board. She was big in that, um, really helped us with our scheduling and all that, and me not knowing what to do. Um, we have a guy who's a history teacher, a guy named Scott Eriks, who has, he's, he's not an administrator, but I don't think he's missed a single meet. He's gone on the road with us. He's at everything. Um, just, he's a true wrestling fan and he's, he's at everything. So he's, he's been, he's been a huge part of, of our program. We'll dedicate today's interview with Todd to all the parents out there who, are realizing the difference that this sport is making in the lives of their youngsters. And we appreciate the opportunity to talk with Todd and the Nike hot seat today. Todd, we hope you had a good time. All right, fans, we appreciate you watching. That'll do it for this week's edition and consequently this year's final edition of Global Wrestling News. Tony, can you believe 52 of them in the books? Yeah, Global Wrestling News, great addition to Take Down Wrestling. Can't wait to uh, for 2017. For all of us, thanks for watching. We'll see you next year.